Hey, every morning. Good morning. Um, I can't seem to get the disclaimer to play properly, so I'm just going to say uh, the, the disclaimer. Uh, this uh, Three Beards Media podcast may contain mature themes and may not be suitable for all audiences, so beware. Uh, I'm going to start off with uh, this song. And I really want you to listen to the lyrics because this is kind of how I'm feeling right now with um, the no job and feeling just kind of crappy about myself. Um, so this kind of sums up how I feel right now. Fighting voices in my mind that say I'm not enough Every single lie that tells me I will never measure up Am I more than just some of every high and every low Remind me once again just who I am because I need to know. Ooh, you say I am loved when I can't feel a thing. You say I am strong when I think I am weak. And you say I am held when I am falling short. Yeah, so um, that's uh, sorry. Um, I promised when I did this podcast I was going to be open about stuff, and I didn't sleep last night. Uh, I woke up kind of crying this morning. I'm sure you can hear my dog barking because I don't know. I'm just I'm struggling this morning. My ego is taking a hit with this job loss, and frankly, I'm scared to death I'm going to get another job, and somebody else is going to tell me I'm not good enough. Or maybe I'm just going to fuck it up. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know. I'm just scared. I mean, how do you get past that? When you're told by people that you're not good enough. Got a couple of rejection letters from some jobs that I applied for, which I, I get, but... I just don't... I'm just scared. I'm scared, and I don't know how to get out of it. Oh. Oh. So, yeah, that's where I'm at with that. Uh, I guess on the bright side, I woke up this morning and there was snow on the ground. I, uh, so, thank God for snow blowers. Uh, I'm not sure how. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, I'm 50 some years old. I, I mean, I go to the gym and stuff, but man, shoveling that heavy snow, hard pass on that. I, I don't want any part of that. So, break out the snow blower here in a little bit. What's, I mean, what's too early to break out the snow blower? That's the question, right? I mean, obviously, I woke up at like five o'clock this morning because I didn't sleep. I wasn't going to go out there at 5 a.m. Is it, is it when it's light out? 
I mean, people know that some other people have to go to work, right? They got to shovel their drive so they can't be too upset. It's not like I'm mowing the lawn, which is something that doesn't have to be done before I have to leave for work or my wife has to leave for work. <clears throat> but I'm curious uh, what other people's thoughts are. What, what, what's too early to run the snowblower? Is it before it gets light out? I mean, if I'm buried in my driveway and I have to get to work and it's 530 in the morning, is it socially acceptable to be running the snowblower at five o'clock in the morning? I don't know. I don't know that it would bother me. Um, but there has to be some kind of limit, right? Um, you know, I was thinking, I don't remember my dad ever shoveling snow. I, isn't that weird? Like, I don't remember that. We, ne we never owned a snowblower. So I'm not entirely sure how we got in and out of the driveway. I don't remember ever watching him shovel snow. Uh, I know when I was younger and first married, uh, we had kind of a gravel driveway in our, in our, at our house. We had a small little house that we had bought for my parents. It was in Des Moines. So it wasn't like it was a, a country house or something like that. And we had kind of a gravel driveway. We'd never had a paved driveway at that house. And I literally never shoveled that thing. I literally just drove through it and made grooves in the snow so that we could get in and out of the driveway. Uh, Looking back, man, what a moron I was. Um, but yeah, we didn't, we never had a gravel driveway, it was, or we had never had a paved driveway at that house. Um, and then when I moved into the house, uh, that uh, that I ended up having when we got divorced from Tracy, um, that was the first paved driveway house that I had lived in that I had bought, and I didn't have a snowblower, and that fucking driveway was long. I mean, it was long and it sucked to shovel. I hated it. So the, I sometimes just did the same thing. I just drove grooves through it until I could get in and out of the garage. I mean, that's looking back. I was like so not smart as, as a younger man. I just was either that or I was lazy. That was probably a lot, a lot of it. Um, you know, I was 400 and some pounds and lazy. And now I'm, I don't know. 280 and lazy <laughs> so but i got a snowblower so that's that's all that matters really <sighs> coffee is going down good this morning the little uh premier protein coffee flavor and is my creamer because i got uh i got creamer out yesterday afternoon i had some uh some uh revelton whiskey cream and liqueur in my coffee for the morning uh, and then I went and got some coffee in the afternoon and then Stacy got home and she's like, why is your creamer left on the counter? And I was like, uh, must've left it out. So I ruined almost an entire bottle of creamer by leaving it out all afternoon and most of the evening. So that was a big way. So yeah, I had to make an adjustment this morning, but, uh, speaking of which, uh, I think, uh, one of our podcasts, uh, hot mess happy hour. Uh, is going to do a little get together down at Revelton Distilling Company. Uh, she texted me yesterday. Amy texted me yesterday and asked me uh, to get in touch with Rob and Christy. So I think they're setting something up. So look out for that. That's going to be super fun. Uh, Tim and I did a little live broadcast from there last February, and it was a blast. It was so much fun. Um, so, and <clears throat> you know, again, all I was going to do the uh, I was going to do the hot uh, sauce tasting but i totally you know i just kind of had a rough morning this morning so uh you know what i think maybe i'll get the boys to come on and we'll do some some taste testing with the boys uh that'll be fun uh i'll have them try some stuff and we'll go from there maybe we'll do that uh saturday um uh, yeah oh yeah i wanted to uh I noticed that uh, you guys all saw that that viral video of uh, Mark Woodley uh, doing the blizzard, uh, the sports guy that was doing the blizzard stuff uh, a couple weeks ago. And I saw he had tweeted out. He's like, oh, great. I got to go back uh, and, and do this again because it's going to snow. And it got me to thinking I was watching the coverage last night and uh, they had Brett McIntyre driving around and, and another gentleman from Channel 13. And I thought they constantly tell us to stay off the roads. And yet they're they're letting these poor bastards just drive around and and tell us what the roads are like with a dashboard camera. And I'm like, why why are you out telling us to not to drive when you guys are out there driving? We get it. We don't need you to be out there 
driving around on these on these roads when they're clearly not I mean what would happen if something happened to one of them right like I it just seems so ridiculous to do I that doesn't make any sense but what do I know uh clearly nothing clearly, <laughs> clearly not a lot so uh you know uh Stacy and I are watching um the crown on Netflix and I don't know if anybody knows this and I kind of mentioned this in a tweet last night I'm a huge history fan I love historical references uh especially uh World War II and and that time period I'm obsessed with reading firsthand account stuff and 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 things like that I I just find it fascinating um I will watch probably any movie that has to do with a historical reference within World War II, uh, World War I, <clears throat> um, a little bit of the Vietnam War, things like that. Uh, and not necessarily war movies, but just that time period, because I, I find it just so fascinating uh, and how the world was and, and and the evils that were out there and, 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 and the, frankly, the heroic efforts of, 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 you know, people and, and, and entities that, that took that on. But, um, it was, um, it was really, uh, uh, so it's, it's good, right? Like every episode I, I find myself Googling it. Did that really happen? And that happened last night. So in season two, I think it's like episode five is the episode, um, where the former King turns out, that he had he had been a Nazi sympathizer and he had met Hitler after he abdicated this the the throne and he um had um done the uh he was involved in a plot to overthrow his brother and take the throne back and then be like a Nazi puppet uh it was just insane and i was like no way is that true and i looked it up and sure enough it is uh, and then I tweeted something out, and then Heather Burnside's like, "Oh yeah, you wait, wait till season three. So now I'm super excited to get to season season three. But uh, that reminded me of some of my favorite uh, historical books that I've read. So if you have not read the mascot, and I'm gonna see if I can bring this up, um, it is a book about uh, a young boy who was Jewish who was taken under by this German, officer in world war ii and he was used as propaganda he was dressed in nazi uh, uh like uniforms and so on and, and and basically taken around uh germany as like this little nazi mascot um to promote nazism and things like that and but the story is told by his son years later after he finds all this stuff in a suitcase. It's a true story. Uh, let me see. Let's see if I can find it here. Because, oh yeah, here it is. The mascot. Unraveling image fan. Share this screen. Your screen. Come on. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Here we go. Boom. The mascot. When a Nazi death squad masks, massacred his mother and fellow villagers, five year old Alex Kurzem escaped hiding in the free and uh, SS soldiers. Alex was able to hide his Jewish identity and went over the soldiers, being a mascot, an honorary corporal in the SS with his own uniform. But we began as a, but we began as a desperate bid for a survival became a performance that delighted the highest ranks of the Nazi elite. And so a young Jewish boy ended up starring in a Nazi propaganda film. After 63 years of silence, Alex revealed his terrible secret to his son, Mark. And with his son's help, Alex retraced his past in search of answers and vindication. This story is at once a terrifying account of survival and a psychological cost, as well as brutally honest examination of identity, complicity, and memory. 
really good book. Uh, it's available on Amazon for like 16 bucks for a paperback. It's really good. Um, <clears throat> so if you like, like first, that's what I like is like firsthand account type things about the war and about people's uh, stories. It's really good. Um, another one that I would recommend, I, gosh, I wish I could remember the name of it, it but it, I, I, I heard it on tape. And it was about this um, this uh, American soldier who actually got captured on purpose and was taken to a Nazi prisoner of war camp to help get some of these other ones escaped. I can't remember the name of it. It pisses me off now because it was really good. Um, I'll see if I can find some of those and tweet them out when I tweet this out. But uh, and then there's another one about uh, a ship full of Jewish um, refugees that just basically was on the ship for the longest time because no country would take them. I mean, there's just all kinds of great stories out there uh, and, and things like that that you just don't ever realize is 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 that is like that. Um, but of course, the the biggest one that that made the biggest um, impact on me was Unbroken by Lauren Hildebrand. I'm sure you've heard the story of Louis Zamperini. Um, he was this, I remember reading this book and going, no fucking way is this real. Like, no way. Um, like how, and I remember being halfway through the book and going, how have I never heard this story before? Like the dude ran in the Olympics and everything else. He was an Olympic gold medalist and or an Olympic hero, and he was captured. And I'd never heard the story. And some of it, it's got to be made up, but it's not. I mean, it's it's legit. So here's here's the story of Louis Zamperini. On May afternoon, 1943, an American military plane crashed into Pacific and disappeared, leaving only a spray of debris and oil of slick of oil, gasoline, and blood. Then on the ocean surface, a face appeared. It was that of a young lieutenant, the plane's bombardier, who was struggling into, to a life raft and pulling himself aboard. So began one of the most extraordinary sagas of the Second World War. The lieutenant's name was Louis Zamperini. As a boy, he had been a clever delinquent, breaking into houses, brawling, and stealing. As a teenager, he channeled his defiance into running, discovering a supreme talent that carried him to the Berlin Olympics. Ahead of Zamperini lay thousands of miles of open ocean, leaping sharks, a sinking raft, thirst and starvation, enemy aircraft, and beyond a trial even greater. Featuring more than 100 photographs plus an exclusive interview with Zamperini, this breathtaking odyssey also captured on film by a director, Angelina Jolie. So this, like, 27 days or something like that in a raft, then was captured by a POW camp tortured for several years uh then he um he then uh uh was rescued but the story after he gets back to the united states and how he finds forgiveness and 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 it's just a powerful story it's so good you guys need to, to either read it or go watch the movie either one so um super great uh, thanks again, everybody, for, for all the support. Uh, I've gotten a lot of uh, nice um, uh, messages and things like that. Uh, and again, these are not super long, 15, 20 minutes. Uh, I got to go snow blow, so I ain't got a lot of time this morning. Anyways, um, but do me a favor. If you're listening and you like it, go to whatever platform you're, you're, you're on, whether it's Apple Podcasts or Spotify, and rate that uh, in Amy's. And Amy from Hot Mess Happy Hour, you know, rated a five. If not, keep that shit to yourself. Uh, but uh, and review too. Reviews help. So you know, give me a little note in there and tell me, you know, what you think. Listen, if I can improve on something or if you, or whatever, I, I would love to know that. So um, otherwise, check out our sponsors, Revelton Distilling Company. Uh, you can pick up their honey whiskey, their their Revelton Shine, their Mulberry Gin is really good. Um, you know, you can pick that up at any Hy-Vee. Uh, or 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 fairway grocery store uh, go down to their distillery in Osceola Iowa uh, check out their tasting room every Saturday afternoon they have um, great music and, and things like that live music 
Uh, of course, Brown Dogs Farms, Robin and Amanda, uh, you know, go to a wild game, go to a Wolves game. They sponsor some packages there. Go to their website, uh, uh, which is tagged in the in the description here uh, in, in your podcast. You can click on that link uh, and get some of it. The, they have a spicy ranch. If you guys are, you know, Iowans, they love ranch, right? Um, their spicy ranch is really good. Uh, it's so good. Uh, and then, you know, again, Kyle Lehman, Wintrust Mortgage. He's running a program right now for first-time home buyers. Check out our video on Three Beards Media uh, YouTube channel with Caitlin and Walker as they're learning the, the new process of, of first-time home buying. I know that there's a program out there uh, with some uh, uh, $10,000 uh, assistance on a down payment that he can get you hooked up on for, I mean, $10,000 for a first-time home buyer uh, for a down payment. That's, you know, that's, that's a no-brainer, right? So... Check out those guys. Uh, check out all our podcasts on, on Three Beards Media, www.threebeardsmedia.com. Uh, fill in the blank with Anya. Uh, Old Man Strength, as you can see, uh, the hat I'm wearing. Uh, Bitter Units. Sigh of the Storm. I think they're going to have a new episode today. Uh, Hot Mess Happy Hour. And it looks like Bill Blank and I are going to launch a new one uh, together. Uh, talking about men's struggles and, and mental health and have some professionals on and and things like that. So uh, I'm going to kick it off. Uh, I'm going to end it here with the rest of this Lauren Daigle sign. You say um, everybody have a great night.